been asked by a column to present to you. I am Toki Hira today. <clears throat> this is a story that happened earlier this year. Look, it's a cold and blustery night. There's no better time for a hot fire, a dry whiskey, and a tall tale. Thus, there I was, traveling to the east on pilgrimage, when I came upon a band of like-minded pilgrims, beset by local brigands in a narrow mountain pass. Being a brave sort, I rallied my fo fellows and pushed the brigands back. Three times we fought them off, raising their elbows as we went. But then the slimy rats got reinforced, and we were forced into a defensive posture. The first wave we fended off handily, but were overrun and forced to retreat twice. Then, to make matters worse, we were forced into a passage that had a narrow goat path. Attacked on two fronts, we had to beat two more hasty retreats. But when all seemed lost, we managed to rout the brigands once again. Emboldened by our success, we assaulted the brigands' mountain camps. Aided by the locals tired of the depredations, we turned the brigands' tactics upon them. Twice we routed them and set their camps ablaze. Finally, there remained but one left. Though shattered and broken, if left alone, they would terrorize the other pilgrims. So we prepared for one final battle. Nothing is more dangerous than a wounded and cornered beast. With sheer desperation on their side, I knew we needed an orthodox strategy. With that in mind, we set out on our grim task. Say, so, there I was, standing by myself on the main approach to the last camp. At the prearranged signal, I roared! The echoes bouncing off the crags like a pride of lions, and charged up the slope, stomping as loud as I could. I was met by the majority of the brigands, buying the time needed for the rest of my band to sneak up the goat path and begin slaughtering those helpless louts who hadn't but abandoned their posts. Finally, the brigands realized their peril and turned to engage my comrades, but the damage was done. Leaving two of their best fighters to engage me, the brigands eventually forced my allies to retreat, but their numbers had been reduced to two plus my two fighting me. They turned to engage me. Thinking fast, I shouted an order to them as if they were my own men. Once again, my ruse worked. One of my opponents, thinking he was being attacked from behind, turned and skewered the leader, the leader of the brigands and her henchmen in one single fluid motion. Now it was down to just me and two remaining brigands. Recklessly, I threw myself into the battle, the berserker blood of my Viking ancestor singing. Ever so slowly, I was pushed down the mountain pass, my opponents unable to flank me. Once more, I set to clever rouge. Now, one of my blades is three hands longer than the other. I repeatedly engaged one of my opponents with my shorter blade, fending off the other brigand with my longer one. Finally, I left him an opening, seemingly letting my blade dip too far to recover. He launched him before my shoulder, which I pivoted out of the way as I finally brought my longsword into the engagement, piercing him through the throat. The final brigand, wounded and demoralized, soon fell. And that, my laddies, is how the pass of Thermopylae was cleared of brigands at Penamere Academy of Defense.